Good afternoon. In this session, we are going to examine the differences between the project property setting for create change package, which is enforce and disable. To do that, we're going to create two projects on my local server. One is a project which we will call enforce. And having created this project, we will immediately go to the project properties and under the options where the create workspace change packages, we will move it from enable to enforce and we will save that setting. The second project that we will create is a project called disable. And for this project, as soon as we create the project, we will come and disable the creation of workspace change packages. In theory, you could do this at any point in time in the life of a project, but typically you would have it set initially to always enabled or to always enforced or always disabled. The intermediate state of uh, always enforced or always disabled, the intermediate state of enable is the default state which would be set if the project XML file, the server XML file in the server settings, in the server configuration, which is under program files, microfocus, star team server, star team XML, star team server configuration XML, If this has check and change packages set to value of one, if this is true, then projects are always enabled for check and change packages by default. If this value was zero when the server was set up, then projects would always be disabled by default. However, you can move that from an enabled to an enforced state on a per project basis, effectively overriding the server-wide setting, which is part of the server configs XML file. Notice that to make a change here, you'd of course need to have the appropriate access rights and administrative permission on the server machine to go in and make that change and save it. So normally only a server engineer would, uh, a server administrator would do that. So to come back to our two projects now, let's examine the enforce project. and we'll ensure that the folder tree exists. We'll come down to the operating system local folders. We'll add a file here, simple little file, a.txt. And we're gonna check this file in. So we'll check this file in. Look at the user interface. It's got the link and process item to change package. We don't have any enforcement of process items. But that's okay. We're not going to worry about description in this case. I'm going to check the file in. And once we've done that, we'll come over to the change packages perspective. We'll see that a change package was created for this file. Not only that, when we switch back to the file perspective for this particular file, If we look at the links, there are no links to the file. If we look at the changes, we'll see the change package. Show changes with the item as the source or show changes with the item as the target. 
we will see the change package associated with this file. So the change package is really an audit container that contains changes where the changes point to the items that were part of the change, in this case, the files that were part of the change itself. If we'd used a process item, then of course we would have had a link between, a trace between the, the process item, which is, let's say, the change request and the change package, and then the, the changes with the item as the source of the target would have shown up the files as well. So for what it's worth, let's do that too. Let's create a change request now. assign it to the administrator and come back to the file. We'll make an edit to the file. We'll save this change and we'll check this file in, but this time we're going to use the process item. Now when we do that, we'll see that there is a second change package associated with this file showing the changes with the item as the target. However, if we switch over to the change request and take a look at the change request itself, we look at the links, we'll see that there is a trace created between the change package and the change request. And if we then look at the changes, we'll see the same changes, but we'll show the changes with the item as the target because the change package contains both a change for the change request as well as a change for the file. If we look at the changes with the, as the process item, we should see as well that since this change request was used as a process item, we'll see the change package associated with that. All right, so that's when we use enforce or for that matter enable we get change packages created check-in change packages or workspace change packages created for every single file operation but they're all done in a transaction so if you checked in five or ten files as a group there'd be a change package would be created around that and that would be committed as part of a transaction so then that begs the question what's the difference between enabling and enforcing workspace change packages. From the, this client's perspective, I am using the 17.1 client. Uh, from this client's perspective, there is no difference. Enabling and enforcing check workspace change packages produces the exact same behavior. It will create a change package and <clears throat> wrap that change package around all the files that have been created, added, checked in, updated, moved, deleted, etc. cetera. Uh, what this enforcement does is it sets a flag on the server so that if any other application, let's say a custom SDK script, an older CPC client, maybe a 2009 client, were to try and check a file into this project and that file was not in the context of a change package, then the server would throw an exception and tell that particular application that it needed to be upgraded to satisfy the requirement of the project that all uh, file check-ins have to be in the context of a change package. So having established what enforcement looks like, let's switch over to what a disabled project looks like. So a project in which we have explicitly disabled uh, the creation of workspace change packages. Now in this case, we're going to effectively, we're going to follow the old process rules that govern the STAR team right up to the 2009 platform, which was effectively 10 years ago. Um, in this case, we'll come over to this file, to this create this folder tree, come over to the folder on disk, create a new file. And put in some text. It 
save it. Now we're going to check this in. Uh, and we'll just go ahead and add it as we did the last time. But you can see that when we actually add this file, we come over to the change packages, there are none. So we come back here and we look at this file. We look at its links. There are no links. We look at its changes. There are no change packages. No matter what we do, there are no change packages at all. Now, if we were to use a change request, let's take the same example from the previous uh, enforcement case. But we're going to create a new change request now. And this is going to be a disabled case change request. Now we're going to come back to this file and we're going to edit this file. And we'll check this in, but this time we'll check it in against the change package, uh, I'm sorry, against the change request, the, the process item, you see that the UI itself changes. Now it allows us to link and pin the file to the process item, update an existing link or create a new link and pin the process item at its end. Now let's go ahead and do all of these things. Let's kind of follow with the, just the defaults for the time being. We'll update the existing link and we'll pin the process item at, at its end. And uh, once we've done all of that stuff, as you can see, nothing's changing as far as change packages go. We're not going to see any change packages. However, if we look at links, we will now see that there was an explicit old style link created between the file and the change request. As I said, there's no change packages, but we're following all the old style process rules and creating old style links. We are no longer creating traces in this context. So the fundamental difference between projects that enforce change packages or enable change packages as opposed to projects that disable them is that in the disable case, we create old style links and we do not create change packages and we create the old style links between the files and the process items directly, whereas if enabling or enforcing change packages, we will create the change packages, we will create a trace between the change package and any process item uh, that was used to check in the files, and the change package itself contains changes, and each change points to the file that was part of that change package. So if I switch over here to the process items perspective once again and look I should not see any changes if I see links I'll see the corresponding link over to the file and bear in mind once again this is the old style link this is not a trace so with that I hope that this concept of using the old style process rules of old style links and no change packages versus the new way of doing things, which is creating change packages with traces, makes uh, a, a little more sense. Thank you.